Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Carlos. How are you? How are you? Good evening. Good evening. We are going to start because uh, of the time and because you are here right now. So we are going to end the topic that we were uh, developing yesterday and begin with the new one because we have different topics for it. So uh, we are going to see the topic that we were uh, developing yesterday. Then we are going to do like a review and after that, we are going to see the new topic that we are going to develop tonight. So yesterday we were talking about the model verbs. Uh, what are model verbs? Uh, the list of model verbs and so uh, many things about them. So uh, yesterday we were saying that we use the model verbs to show if we believe something Instantain, possible or impossible. But also we use them to talk about ability, ask permission and make requests and offers. And that was the last part. So in that case, we are going to uh, talk about the last part that is uh, talking about ability, ask permission and make requests and offers. But in uh, we are just mentioned some things about them and then we are going to start with a new topic. So for the first one, it says that um, we can uh, talk about or use the um, the model verbs for uh, something that is a through chain or, or is um, a probability. And we say that something that is a possibility, we can use may, might, and could. We are going to mark in different colors, may, might, and cool are used to talk about something that is possible. And in this case, the three of these, it's to talk about when something is possible but no certain, es posible, pero no es algo que va a suceder en realidad. We can use may, call, and might. Then um, we have some examples and it says, they might come by car. Maybe they will come by car. That is a possibility, but it is not certain. They might be at home. Maybe they are at home. If we don't hurry, we could be late. Maybe we'll be late. We use can to make general statements about what is possible. It can be very cold here in winter. It is sometimes very cold here in winter. You can easily get lost in this town. People often get lost in this town. So in this case, we use may, cold, and might for something that is possible but is not certain. Can we can use it for general statement that this one uh, we are going to use it for general statements about what is possible. But be careful, we don't use can to talk about a specific event. For example, where is John? 
I'm not sure. He may, might, will be in his office. In this case, when we use can, we can use it for a specific events. Can is used for general uh, statements that something is possible, but in this case, we can use it in a specific event. Then it says that we use may have, might have, or could have to make guesses about the past. In this case, we use may, could, and might, but we use also the have a verb to a create or to talk about a guesses about the past, something that we are not certain that had happened, but we can make some, a, uh, we can think some things. And in this case, we use may have, might have, or could have for a, making guesses about the past. For example, I haven't received your letter. It may have got lost in the post. Para eh, hablar de eh, cosas que pudieron haber pasado, pero que nosotros no estamos seguros o lo estamos adivinando, utilizamos el might have, might have, or could have para algo que pudo haber pasado en el pasado, que nosotros no estamos seguros, pero nosotros tendemos a pensar en eso. Y en el ejemplo, no recibí tu carta. Se pudo haber perdido en el correo. That is something that we are guessing about the things that have lost. It's 10 o'clock. They might have arrived by now. Where are they? They could have got lost. It could be very cold there in winter. It got sometimes very cold there in winter. Then we have the impossibility. We use can or cannot to say something is impossible. They can be true. You cannot be serious. In this case, we are using uh, the negative form of can, and it's to talk about something that is impossible. Then for saying tinti or something that is certain, we use must to talk about something that is certain. In this case, we use just must for something that is certain. To show we are sure something is true and we have reason for our belief. In this case, we use must when we are really, really sure about an action, about a situation, and we have reasons to say that. It is not something imaginary. Uh, we are not guessing. This is something certain that we have our reasons to talk about that specific um, actions or tell that specific information. It's getting dark. It must, it must be quite late. You haven't eaten all day. You must be hungry. We use sure to suggest something is true and we have reason for our suggestion. So in this case, we use sure to to talk about something that is certain. So in this case, in uh, with the first one, must, Tenemos los, los ejemplos para must de que algo es real. Tenemos pruebas o en muchos casos tenemos nuestras razones para decirlo. Y dice en el ejemplo, it's getting dark. Se está volviendo, se está poniendo oscuro. It must be quite late. Es un poco tarde o debe ser un poco tarde. We have uh, reasons to say that because we are seeing that outside it's quite dark. And we say, mm, it's must, it must be really, really uh, late. But in the case that we see outside and we see the sun or some light, we can say that it's quite late because of the, um, the action or the things that we are seeing. But in the, the case that we see something that is really true, we can use must. So also we can use should to suggest. In this case, it is not something that is really, really certain. In this case, we can suggest something that is true and we have reason for our suggestion. For example, as Miranda, she should know. En este caso estamos haciendo como, estamos sugiriendo que algo es cierto porque tenemos razones para decirlo. En el ejemplo, ask Miranda, pregúntale a Miranda 
But why? She should know. Ella debería de saber o ella puede saber la información que necesitamos. It's nearly six o'clock. They should arrive soon. Son casi las seis de la tarde o las seis de la mañana. Ellos deberían llegar pronto. Because we have a schedule. So, we use must for something that is certain and we use should to suggest something that is true and we have reasons for our suggestion. Also, we use must have and should have for the past. We use those to talk about the past and we have an example. They hadn't eaten all day. They must have been hungry. To talk about the past, must have, should have. Then we have the ability. We use can and can to talk about someone's skill or general abilities. In this case, we can see that um, it's very, very uh, useful, the can, that word, even in negative, can, to talk about uh, something general, uh, to talk about skills. Um, we have some examples. She can speak several languages. He can swim like a fish. They can dance very well. So in this case, we are using can for a specific information and a specific skills. We use can and can to talk about the ability to do something at a specific time in the present or future. And in this case, we are not uh, just using can for the past or some things in the past. We are using can and can for uh, talking about the ability to do something in the present and in the future. I can see you, puedo verte, I can see you. Help, I can breathe. Ayuda, no puedo respirar. We use cool and couldn't to talk about the past. In this case, we are going to use couldn't or cool to talk about the past, something in the past. She could speak several languages. Ella podía hablar muchos idiomas. I couldn't see you, no podía verte. We use could have to say that someone had the ability or opportunity to do something but did not do it. Also, we can use could have the structure cool plus have to talk about or say something to someone that had the ability or opportunity to do something but that person did not do it. Utilizamos este, esta estructura de el cool más el have para hablar de que alguien tenía la oportunidad o la habilidad para hacer algo pero al final no lo hizo. Then, now we are going to uh, begin with the next topic that is uh, the following uh, words that we have here. And we have the topic for today that is infinitive and gerunds. We are going to talk about uh, structures. And I think that you have seen uh, these topics before, but now we are going to do like a review of these topics and we are going to learn something about them and how to use it, some examples, uh, some list of verbs and all of that. And if you have, or had in the past trouble with these topics, we are going to um, relearn uh, the information about these topics and we can make some uh, progressions or we are going to uh, practice more about these topics. So we have uh, in this case that we use gerunds, that is the ing form of the verb, but we are going to talk about the uses, just the uses. In this case, we are going to start with the gerunds. We use gerunds and we have the formula for these kind of verbs, that is the verb plus, plus the ing form. In this case, it's adding the ing um, at the end of the verb. So, when we use this kind of verbs or when uh, we use the gerunds, we use the gerunds and we are going to make some kind of list. And we have the first one. We use gerunds after certain verbs. 
And we have an example. I enjoy singing. And we have here the structure. We have the verb and we have a, the ing form. We have enjoy and we have singing. But in this case, it says after certain verbs. But what are those verbs? In this moment, we don't know what are those verbs, but we are going to write some uh, examples to know what are those verbs. So, we are going to do a list of the most common verbs that are usually followed by the gerund. So, So we are going to do the list like this. We're doing like this. So we have the first uh, verb. We have enjoy, that is the first verb. And we have this um, example. I enjoy, in this case, we are going to do it in the past. I enjoy, and we have here the verb with ing form, living. I enjoy living, and we are going to mark this in France. Then, fancy. I fancy seeing a film today or tonight, maybe. Then we have discuss, and we have the example. We discuss, again in past, waiting, that is the ing form of the verb, waiting for buses. Then we have dislike, I dislike Oh, um make mistake here. We discuss waiting. Hmm. We discuss going in this case is not waiting, it's going. I made a really big mistake. We are going to change this verb that is going and not um, waiting. Uh, going on holiday together, it does not make sense. Holiday together. So in the second one, that is this one, it's the waiting. I dislike waiting. I dislike waiting. for buses, that's the correct one. Then we have finished. We have finished preparing. Preparing for the meeting. And we have a mind. I don't mind. Coming early. Then we have suggest. He suggested 
staying at the Grand Hotel. Recommend. They recommend meeting earlier. Keep. He kept working Okay, and in this case, when we are using the ing form of the verb, we are um, uh, changing a little bit the, the end of the verbs. Okay, uh, we are changing the end of the verbs and we are adding the ing form. And in this case, we have the verbs that are uh, changing with the endings. And we have uh, these ones like this with that color because it is easier to find them. And we have some examples. In this case, we are doing like, um, like some examples uh, using those uh, phrases or those words and in this case, we use something before the, the verb in ing form. For example, in the first one, enjoy. I am feeling something and I am uh, enjoying something. So in this case, I enjoy living in France. I feel good living in that place. I fancy then discuss, dislike and all of that. But the, the, the main point of this are the verbs with the ing form. So it's, it says that we have also, we have the ing form of this verb after prepositions. It is not just after the verbs. We have different um, uses and we have this one. So let me mark this. But I am going to change this. I, oh my God. I don't want to change everything. So let me see. Then we have, yeah, like that. Okay. We have after prepositions. Also, we can use the ing form of the verb after prepositions. And we have an example. I drank a cup of coffee and then we have here the preposition before. This one is the preposition. Then after the preposition, I have the verb with ing form. I drank a cup of coffee before leaving. Okay, we have the prepositions and we have the verb with the ing form. But we are going to just do a, a review of the prepositions. We are going to write uh, some preposition just to remember what are the prepositions and the most common example of these words. So we have about. We have abroad, we have across, we have after, against, we have ago, along, 
we have before, behind. We have below. We have uh, also between. Down. We have also, let's see, another one inside that is very common. Like, that is used as preposition next to, on, that is another a very used preposition, opposite, over, things, under, until. So in this case, I have a little short a list of prepositions, but in the document that I will send you to the group of WhatsApp the, um, tomorrow, because tomorrow is the end of the four days of the first week. And I tend to send the information in the fourth day. So tomorrow I will send you this information, but in that document, I have a list of 100 important preposition lists that you can uh, use in the future. So in the document, you have a lot of information more about these topics. So it's not, um, important that we can uh, write all the 100 uh, preposition in this moment. So in the document, you will find the image with the 100 uh, preposition needs. And we know that we have a lot more. But in this case, this is just to make a review of this topic. So be, um, in this case, after the preposition, we are going to use a verb with the ing form. Like in the example, I drank a cup of coffee before leaving. Ya tenemos dos partes del ING. Primero lo hacemos después de, eh, del verbo. Oh, omen, that's another one. Yes, we have that uh, preposition. But it, uh, I was saying, uh, I have a list of 100 important preposition lists. And in that list, it's... Um, in alphabetical order. So you have 100 in this list and it is among that someone is saying that we can add among in the list that we are writing right now. But in the in the document, you will find that a list with the 100 uh, prepositions. So don't worry, there are a lot of words in that list that you are going to see tomorrow. So. Then we have the other use of the ING, or in the cases that we are going to use the ING form of the verb. Then it says, as the subject, as the subject or object of a sentence. And we have here the example is swimming. It's a good exercise. Okay. So we have the subject or the object of the sentence and we can use it like it is with the ing form of the verb. So we have three uses for the ing form of the verb. The first one, that is the uh, up before the verb, like we are seeing in this case, that we have, I mean, after certain verbs that we have some examples, then after the preposition that also we have some examples here of the prepositions, and then we can use it as the subject or object of a sentence. And we use uh, this kind of verb adding just ing. In some cases, we can change some letters at the end of the verb because uh, we can use it like that. Um, 
For example, in the case that fly, the verb fly, we are just going to add ing, flying. But in this case, um, as women, we add some words to the verb. So in, the, in those cases, um, we can uh, change in something. So then we have another one, but in this case, it is not talking about the ing form of the verb. We are talking about the infinitive. That is another uh, topic. And in this case, the infinitive is not a really complicated topic because you know that we use the base form of the verb using the to with these uh, kind of expressions. So we have the other part. We use to plus infinitive. And we have, again, some kind of list. And it says, after certain verbs, again, like the ing, we decided to leave. So we have a, a list. We are going to do a list, like in the ing form of the verb, for the example. So we have that we use the uh, infinitive form. And in this case, if you can see, uh, we are not using the ing form of the verb as the main point of the sentence. And also, we are not using the infinitive as the main point of the sentence. We are using them as a complement in this case. So it is not the base for um, for our sentence. It is like a complement because we have some um, things after or before the use of these uh, structures. So we have the examples. Again, we are going to do the same um, the same thing with the list. We have agree, like the first one. And we have an example. She agreed. In this case in past, to give a presentation at the meeting. Okay, she agreed. Ella estuvo de acuerdo en que to give a presentation and dar una presentación. In that a moment it's it's when we are going to write the uh, infinity form of the verb to give then we have another one ask i ask to leave early Or we can have another one. I ask him to leave early. So we have here to leave and here again. Then we have the another one, decide. We decide. to go for dinner. So we decide to go out for a dinner. We have here the infinity form. Then we have another one that is help. And in this case, we have two ways to say it. He helped it to clean the kitchen. Or we can say like this, he helps. He helped his flightmate. Or we can say he helped his classmate to clean the kitchen. 
So we have to clean like this and again. Then we have the plan, in this case plan, and we have ship plans to buy a new car next year. So in that case, it's not really complicated to know where to write a um, the infinity form of the verb. In this case, uh, we are maybe talking about some actions that happen in the present. Um, for example, in the number one, she agreed to give a presentation at the meeting. In that case, we are talking about the past, something that um, someone decided in the past because of the, of the first part of the sentence. She agreed, ella estuvo de acuerdo en dar una presentación in la reunión. Then the second one, I asked to leave early. I asked him to leave early. Pre, eh, pedí, pregunté para irme temprano. Uh, le pregunté a él que nos fuéramos temprano. Eh, we decided to go out for dinner. Decidimos salir para la cena. He helped to clean the kitchen. Él ayudó a limpiar la cocina. He helped his classmate to clean the kitchen. Él ayudó a su compañero a limpiar la cocina. So in that case, eh, we said that we can use an object before the infinitive with these verbs. We can use an object before that eh, verbs. In the help can also be followed by the infinitive without two with no difference in meaning. In this case, with the, the expression help, we can use this verb without the two, and it is not different in the meaning. Eh, con el help, con el ayuda, podemos utilizar eh, el verbo infinitivo sin el to, porque en muchos casos se utiliza eh, de esa forma, sin el to, solo el infinitivo, la, la forma base del verbo. Y no va a haber ningún cambio con eso, va a ser lo mismo. Then, we have another um, way to use uh, this infinitive, and it is, Let's see. After many adjectives. And we have an example. It's difficult to get up early. So we know that difficult is the adjective and we have the infinitive here. So we are going to talk about the adjectives. In this case, we know that the adjectives are words that uh, can uh, describe people, animals, um, places, and things. All the words that can describe someone, something, some animals, on all of that, it's an adjective. In this case, we have difficult, but also we have big, we have large, we have heavy, black, brown, gray. The numbers also are adjectives. Uh, cold, hot, uh, the colors are adjectives. And in this case, we can use the adjectives and then we can use the infinitive form of the verb. It's hard to sleep at night. For example, it's hard, hard is the adjective to sleep. It's the verb in infinitive form. At night, it is the complement of the sentence. So after the adjectives, we can use the infinity form. So it says that we can use also the verb infinitive. In this case, the verb infinitive, uh, it's when we don't use the two. El ver infinitive es cuando no utilizamos el to, solo utilizamos el verbo en forma base. Also, we have another one of the uses that is after modal verbs. And we have the example. 
I can meet you at six. Okay, in this case, we were talking about the modal verbs before and we know what are the modal verbs. But in this case, if you can see something, in, in this case, we are not using the infinity form of the verb like the infinity form. We are using the bare form of the verb. No estamos utilizando la forma infinitiva como tal, sino que estamos utilizando el bare form, que es solo el verbo en forma base sin el to, cuando utilizamos los modal verbs. It says that also we can use the, the infinity form of the verb after some verbs of perception, like see, watch, hear, notice, feel, and sense. And also after expressions with why. And now we are going to do an exercise. It is a rhythm one, so. I'm going to write, let me see, there are 20 sentences. We have 20 sentences. I will write the sentence with the verb in parentheses. And then you are going to uh, say it is infinitive or it is um, with the ing form that is the gerbil. So you are going to read the sentence. Then you are going to tell me if the uh, verb is going to be a uh, gerbil or to be infinitive. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio, son 20 oraciones, las voy a ir escribiendo. Van a tener tiempo para leerlas y para analizarlas. Luego vamos a decir si son verbos en infinitivo o verbos en gerundio. But take your time. It is, it is not uh, necessary to do it faster, faster, faster. So you have to um, have some minutes to read the sentences, then we are going to decide, we are going to discuss. So let me move this, I can do it. So give me some time and I will move this like this. I need to order these windows. Okay, now we are going to do it in a new page. So we have exercise. And we have here the sentence. So you have time to read, then I will, give, I will give you more time. And then we are going to discuss it is infinitive or if it is German. So we are going to start.
So here we have the 20 sentences. So we are going to let's see if I can have all of them in the screen. So we have 20 sentences. Now you are going to read them and then you are going to say if they, uh, this word that we have in the uh, parentheses, it's used in um, infinity form or it is used in gerund or the ing form of the verb. So you have some minutes to think to read, to understand what is the sentence about. And then we are going to um, answer this uh, exercise. So you have to read the sentence and say, mm, what is the best option? Maybe gerund, maybe infinity form. So read the sentence and I will give you some minutes. Then I will uh, ask you to tell me if the verb is in infinity or if it is in a ing form or gerund. So let's start.
Okay, it's time to uh, solve these uh, sentences because it's almost time to end uh, this session. So for the number one, I don't fancy it is infinitive or it is German. Infinitive. And, uh, infinitive. Okay, let's see. If we German. read the sentence, if we read the sentence, we say, I don't fancy to go out tonight. No, mm -hmm. right? Oh, In this case, so it is going. Uh -huh. Going out tonight. I don't fancy going out. Going. going out tonight. So in this case, it's German. Number two, she avoid. In this case, is infinitive or German? German. Infinitive. 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 Mm, infinitive. Let's see. She avoid to tell him about her plans. She avoid to tell him about her plans or she avoid telling him telling him in this case again it's Jaron. Telling him about her plans. Now let's see this one. I would like Infinitive. To come in this case, it is infinity. It is infinity. Yes. Then number four, he enjoys Gerund. 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 having Harvey. having a bad in the evening. Now yes. number five, she kept talking. Talking. That's good. Talking during the film. I am learning what? To speak. To speak good in English or English. Number yeah. seven, do you mind? Giving. 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 That's giving. good. Giving. Yeah. Giving me a hand. Number eight. Uh huh. Someone says, giving. but she says in a really, really low voice, but you can say it. Carry to uh huh to carry. I hear someone saying, but let it be loud. You can say it loud, don't worry. Okay, we are learning. We are learning now. Number nine, I have finished cooking. Cooking, cooking. that's good. Cooking, I okay, cooking. Now, he decides to study. He decides to study. In this case, it is infinity. Infinity. To study. study. Then, number 11. I dislike waiting. 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 Mm -hmm. Wait. Number 12. He asked. Asked to. To come with us. Um, with us. I promise to help you to, to help okay. you tomorrow. To help good. tomorrow. Good. Fourteen. We discuss going to the going cinema. To the cinema. Not going to the cinema, but at the end we stayed home. Fifteen. She agreed to bring the bring party. They put into the dinner. Sixteen. Taking. 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 We have someone said. To visit. Uh huh. To visit. To visit. To visit. To visit. That's good. Eighteen. She's a guest. Suggest so going. 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 Good, good, good. And we have just two more. They plan what? To, to start. start. To start. Mm -hmm. yeah. To start. And the last one. I don't I want need to leave. I don't, to I don't leave. want to leave. Want to leave. Okay. That's the exercise. 
we have to read and think what are the best option for these uh, verbs. So now we are going to um, end this session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.